in the last video, I talked about filtration plants and how they have a filtration stage, right? So at the filtration stage, we had these sand bed filters and they helped us to remove all the pretty fine particles. So after flocation and um, coagulation and sedimentation, we had most of the actual particles removed. We still needed to do it a bit more, and that was at the filtration stage. And that was these sand bed filters. Now, the sand bed filters we said were quite effective. Um, they weren't perfect, but they were quite effective. The idea was simply that we have water coming through, it goes through a bit of sand and gravel, and by the end, the vast majority of it is, the vast majority of the fine particles are removed. Right? Not all, but the vast majority. And that was the whole sand bed filtration. But in this video, we're going to cover a different concept. So a new technology that has come up or is coming up that's already available, but a bit more expensive than sand filters. And that's your membrane filters. I'll read the top one. It says, describe the design and composition of microscopic membrane filters and explain how they purify contaminated water. So describe the design and composition, Composition, right? Describe means we have to give features of the composition, which means what is it made up of, so the composition and the actual um, design. So how does it look like? How have they put all that, how have they assembled it together? Right? So we have to talk about the composition and design of these membrane filters. And we also have to talk about how it actually works. So it says explain, which means you need to be able to explain. So how does it work? How does do these membrane filters work? So how does it work? And that's what we'll be, what we'll be doing in this video. We'll be talking about design and composition plus how it works as well. All right, so first of all, what are these filters? You can see these filters here. This is how they look like. And what they actually are are a layer of polymers. All right, so I'm talking about the composition first. And then I'll quickly talk about the design as well. So they're, they're the composition. So what are they made up? They are made up of these layers of polymers. Now these polymers can be plastic type polymers, such as polypropylene uh, or PTFE. There's a couple more as well. There's maybe two or three other ones that often get mentioned. But I would recommend you, if you do remember remember name, maybe don't try aiming for six names, maybe just one or two. Um, so if you mention, if you remember these two, that should suffice, that should be enough. Suffice, not suffice. Um, polypropylene and PTFE, right? But it can also be glass, metal, or ceramics. So these actual polymers can be made up of different types of substances, either these plastic ones or glass, metal, or ceramics. But you can see these, they're in layers, right? So these layers are actually really thin. They're, they're microscopic. They're only a couple of microns thick, these layers. But there's basically lots of them. So you've got, you've got one, two, three, four, and you have, you'll have hundreds of, of these layers all lined up. And you can see they're being coiled around something. So we have a core in the middle, right? So this core. This is iron core here, and around this iron core, we're going to wind these actual layers up. So at the end, you can see there's they, there would be lots of them quite quite thick, not just one layer, but literally hundreds of layers thick. Right? So we have these the core in the middle, the iron core, but we have numerous layers, many many hundred layers, hundreds of layers that make up this actual whole filtration membrane filtration, and remember these layers can be made up of plastics or glass, metal, or ceramics. And there's three different types of filters. There's the microfilters or microfiltration, ultrafiltration, and nanofiltration. And that's just the size of the actual pores. You can imagine this actual sheet is going to have some pores in it. The pores are just small openings. And these openings would be where water will pass. So these openings are big enough for water to pass. But ideally other stuff, such as pathogens or dissolved particles or um, dissolved particles or suspended particles, they won't be able to get past, they'll get stuck. And once they get stuck, they'll actually get washed away and go somewhere else, right? So the idea would be just that water and just very few other ions pass, whereas the stuff that we don't want will get stuck and get washed away. So I've already given you a bit of hints in terms of how it works as well. So how it works is important that you to realize there are actually different types of layers or different layers. Some where water can pass through, so here you can look at that picture here, you can see water will actually not go through the core. Water will go straight through all these layers. So water will be pumped into all of these layers. You can imagine just water coming from, water will not be coming from here. So you'd expect water to be traveling this way. But water will actually be pumped into the sides, but not through the actual metal core. It'll be pumped through all the other parts, right? That's where water will come in. And water will 
move on something called the feeder space membrane. So there's a feeder space membrane because the water we put in is called the feed water. That's the water that goes in. That's the unclean water. Right? So the feed water is the unclean water or the raw water. And that will pass through a feed space membrane. Now, all of the other membranes which are on top of it are actually too big for the other particles, many of the other particles to pass. So, for example, these RO membranes on top of it. So, that means whilst water will pass through that layer towards, will pass through the layer towards the center, you can see at the end we've got permeate coming out. So, this water will be clean water. You can see this is the permeate. It's more or less water with a couple of ions that we want. So this is more or less the cleaned after filter water. So permeate is clean water. And after it's basically going to be traveling through these layers towards that outer core where it will leave. But as it goes, as this water travels through this feeder space membrane, the other stuff will get stuck. And that will form something called the concentrate. So the concentrate There'll be some liquid in there, but it'll be mostly stuff we don't want. So all the stuff that got stuck on the way will travel a different direction and will basically be removed from the whole system. Right? So the idea is that we have these different layers. Water can pass through one of the layers and won't get stuck, right? Because water can just pass through them. Whereas the other, the other particles are too big, so they get stuck on these other layers. And then you have another mechanism to make sure that it can remove most of the things that get stuck. Right? And all this has to have high pressure, so that's also important. We have high pressure to make sure we can pump the water through. Right? So it doesn't just go on at low pace, it goes at a high pace because we've got literally got water pumping through it at high speeds. Right? Um, so that's kind of how it works. It's more or less relatively straightforward. Um, it's, for me, the one thing that I found confusing was that water travels like that and then somehow gets through there. Um, but, but yeah, that's how it works. You've got water traveling through all of these different sections. They meet up at this pipe at the end and that's water that comes out there to the clean water. Um, on the way, we've lost all of these particles, these suspended particles, the dissolved particles we don't want, the pathogens, they got stuck. And they'll come out a different part as a concentrate, which means all the stuff we don't want. Um, and what you should also know is, again, we have these different uh, sizes, micro, ultra, nano. Now, with microfiltration, the problem is some of our organic molecules won't be lost. Organic molecules are the ones which will give the um, water a bit of a smell and a bit of a stench. So some of, sometimes some organic molecules, most of them will be gone, but some of them might not be gone. So that's why ultrafiltration is good because that removes most, basically all of the pathogens, all of the suspended particles, and the organic molecules as well. Now, nanofiltration is just it's a level on top of that, even better filtration, but the problem with nanofiltration, it's such a fine pores, the pores are so small that it requires really high pressure to be able to squeeze them through, and that high pressure will cost a lot of money. So nanofiltration isn't used too often because of the high cost. Um, and when it comes to advantages of these membranes, the advantage is that it's really powerful. It's better, it's better at cleaning than the other ones, the uh, sand bed filters. But some of the negative ones would be, initially it will cost more, like the cost is more expensive. We don't need to talk too much about pros and cons because Doppler doesn't say it, but the, the initial cost is quite expensive. And also sometimes you do, you do actually get some of this actual concentrate being stuck at the pores. It might block the pores. And when it blocks the pores, that requires uh, lots of cleaning. And that sometimes can mean that the whole thing it fails and it just shuts down. So if it blocks the pores, that means the whole system sh kind of shuts down. Especially organic molecules can block those pores. But I'll go through the dot point again. You need to know about the composition, which means these are, these are just, the whole thing is made up of these layers, these sheets. They are made up of these layers of polymers. They are, can either be polypropylene or PCFE or some of the other ones I have mentioned. It can also be made of glass, metal, or ceramics. Right? So that's the composition. Its design is, is in, made in these sheets, which are folded up and kind of whirled, curled around one of these cores, which is in the middle, the core. Um, and the sheets, the filters on these sheets can be either micro, ultra, or nano filters. And the smaller it gets, the more powerful they are. But the problem is the more costly they get as well. And how it works, that was the, the, the design and the composition and how it works. We've got water being pumped in through the ends here. 
we get pump through and basically it, out of the other end comes only permeate, so that's the clean water, the one that we want, and everything else gets stuck in these sheets between and then gets removed as something called concentrate, which is just gone, it's just um, all the bad stuff has been cleaned out and has been removed and it doesn't go in the same hole, it doesn't remove, it isn't removed the same hole as the, the clean water is, but that's how that system works. So hopefully that was, was useful.